Ray tracing is the future, with path tracing a bit further down the line. And already some games require you to have a GPU with harder ray tracing capabilities. In this video I'm gonna check the performance drop of using ray tracing and path tracing over pure raster on RDNA 4 architecture. For this video I'm gonna use the Red Devil 9070XT. FSR4 is enabled, so games that are whitelisted by AMD should use FSR4 instead of FSR3. I know that most of you who use ray tracing enable some sort of upscaling, but in this video I'm gonna cover the worst case scenario. Max settings raster versus max settings ray tracing and path tracing. I did test a few games with upscaling just to see the performance uplift versus native raster and on RDNA 4 you can't reach parity, meaning that even when enabling upscaling quality, you will not reach the frame rates of pure raster. I didn't check in all games, but here is a few. In Alan Wake 2, when enabling FSR quality paired with ray tracing, the performance delta in favor of pure raster was around 18.6%, while in The Witcher 3 the difference stood at 29.7%. Both games were tested at 1440p. The reason I didn't test with upscaling is that I wanted to make sure that the GPU was always at 100% utilization at both 1080p and 1440p. I didn't test at 4K because in order to achieve decent FPS I needed upscaling set to balanced or performance for path tracing games. As always, I'm gonna show side-by-side -side runs, but this time around I'm gonna show only the 1440p. The settings are shown for RT on and off. I will display the 1080p results as well, but not show the side-by-side -side runs. The configuration used for testing can be seen in the video's description. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Excuse me! I'm not gonna show the frame rates obtained per game at 1080p and 1440p. If interested, check the side by side rounds. 
What I'm focusing on is the performance difference between pure raster and max ray tracing settings. There are three games where we can see huge differences. Alan Wake 2, Cyberpunk 2077 and Spider-Man 2. These are heavy ray tracing games and going from max raster settings to max ray tracing settings halves the frame rate. On the opposite side of the spectrum, there are light ray tracing games like Monster Hunter Wilds and Silent Hill 2. In these games, ray tracing is not that taxing on RDNA 4. Oblivion Remastered uses ray traced lumen software, so in other words, this game is still using ray tracing. But I believe lumen set to software is not using so many lights as opposed to when setting lumen to hardware. Ratchet and Clank is a game that sees a 70% performance drop, but in this one you can enable FSR 4 quality, even at 1440p, and enjoy all the eye candy with good frame rate. The Witcher 3 has a 44% drop, which is better than the average 59.8 performance drop obtained in all games tested. Let's move to path tracing. I was planning to test Doom with path tracing, but there is no clear setting for ray tracing and path tracing. When it comes to Indiana Jones, when enabling full path tracing at 1440p, 16GB VRAM is not enough, and because of this, sometimes the performance drops. I had to restart the game and just do these short runs. Nvidia's 5080 behaves the same when maximizing everything. Both previously mentioned games have no option to fully disable ray tracing, so you will need a GPU with harder ray tracing capabilities. The writer of these pages knows what will happen. Because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. Going full path tracing over raster sees the frame rate drop almost 300%, which is huge. Keep in mind that these two games are built using NVIDIA's hardware. Simply put, in these games you will need aggressive upscaling or just don't use max settings in order to get decent frame rate using the 9070 XT and path tracing. Now let's move to the performance difference between ray tracing and path tracing. When it comes to Indiana Jones, even if you disable ray tracing, you still have ray trace lightning, but this is very light. The 9070 XT is capable of good frame rates when RT is set to off. The writer of these pages knows what will happen, because they're behind this, or because they can see what's coming. As expected, going with ray tracing over path tracing is best. In Alan Wake 2, the performance gains of choosing ray tracing over path tracing is almost double the frame rate obtained with full path tracing. Overall, the performance advantage of going with ray tracing over path tracing is 78.1%. What is more interesting is the fact that in the only game in this chart that is built with ray tracing in mind, that is Indiana Jones, RDNA 4 delivers the best path tracing results when compared to the other two. Moving forward, developers will ditch raster, thus you will need ray trace capable GPUs. With that said, we are not there yet, as the performance drop is still big. Even on Nvidia's 5080 there is a performance drop of around 7.2% in light RT games like Monster Hunter Wilds. 
What helps NVIDIA is that, for example, in Cyberpunk 2077, the performance difference between raster with DLA-A and path tracing paired with DLSS4 quality at 1440p is around 22% in favor of pure raster, while on the 9070XT using FSR-free native and FSR-free quality paired with path tracing, the performance difference stands at 53.4%. Sure, this game is developed for NVIDIA hardware, but most if not all path tracing games are designed with NVIDIA in mind and behave more or less the same. Now, AMD is working at Redstone, which should help increase performance in heavy ray tracing and path tracing games as it will introduce new features like neural radiance caching, machine learning ray regeneration and machine learning frame generation aiming to achieve technological parity with NVIDIA's DLSS 4, but I'm not sure if it will work on games already released or game developers will need to do some stuff on their side. Hopefully it will not take long until AMD finishes work on it. RDNA 4 is capable when it comes to RT, so reducing RT settings will bring the performance closer to pure raster. Sooner or later, games will need only GPUs that have hardware retracing capabilities. On AMD's side, this generation is well positioned as opposed to previous generations. I would say that Nvidia is a bit better, as the 40 series are capable ray tracing GPUs, but the 50 series didn't bring much needed ray tracing performance uplift, thus allowing AMD to close the gap, but not reach parity yet. And that's it for this video. If you found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing to the channel and drop a comment below and let me know if you're using ray tracing in games it doesn't matter if you turn down settings to have better frame rates take care and hope to see you all in the next one